Howdy, this is Chuck with Simply Nook, and today is the Simply Nook teardown of the new Serpent Canyon. I've already loosened a lot of the screws to speed this up, but I wanted to show you. So the first is we have the six captured hex screws that hold the uh, plastic lid down. And then we have the six number one Phillips heads that hold on the panel. Unplug it, that aside. Now we can see the inside. Next thing we're gonna do is remove these four screws that hold on the plastic frame. There's also two hex screws in the back uh, into the heat sink that are protruding through the plastic frame, so they'll have to come out as well. Switching over to hex. Back are two hex head screws. So at this point, the plastic frame is loose. The, the uh, microphone array is has a cable that holds it in, so we'll unplug it. Then we will remove the frame. As always, I have my anti-static smock on, wrist strap, and we're working on an anti-static uh, work mat. Again, don't try this at home. Live vicariously through me. Disassemble it vicariously through me so that you don't damage your own. All right, and there is the plastic frame. And now we can see a little bit more. So the next thing that we need to do is remove one Phillips head screw. Um, before we do that, or we're going to also remove the radio and the antenna. So we have the M.2 screw that holds the radio in. And then there's three screws on the side. This will just make it easier to get the board out if we get the antenna out of the way. So there's three screws on the side for the antenna. The antenna also has an adhesive EMI sponge on it. So when you start to pull it off, it, it will peel off a little bit. So we're going to just gently it come loose and remove the... There we go. <clears throat> we also have two of the fan screws. Our fan cables, so we're going to unplug them now, and we're going to switch over to a nut driver. So we have four standoff or five standoff posts. This tall one, and these four short ones. And with these out of the way, I believe we are ready to remove the motherboard. So there's a few other Phillips head screws, but none of those are required to uh, get the motherboard out. All right. So at this point, the motherboard should be loose. It is. Band cables out of the way. The motherboard has to come straight up because of the heat sink uh, is, is long. Goes all the way down to the uh, bottom of the chassis. Right, at this point, we now have the uh, motherboard out of the way. We'll take a quick look at the bottom before I switch over looking at the motherboard. So we have our left and right uh, blower, and the motherboard is marked for left and right. 
it does matter because one cools uh, the CPU and the other one, uh, and part of the GPU and the other one cools the GPU. There's the bottom. And you can see that it, it's easy to blow out the, uh, the blowers from the bottom and there's no need to take it apart to clean, all right? And we're gonna switch to the motherboard next. All right, so here is the motherboard. And you can see from the heat pipes, the processors heat pipes come into this middle section. And then the GPU heat pipes actually come over here as well as over here. So the DRAM for the GPU is cooled as well as the GPU, it covers quite a large area and then the CPU is kind of nestled in between. So they share a small area. All right, and so first thing we'll do, we're going to remove the post that's holding the heat sink on and the two Phillips head screws. Three Phillips. Then we can focus on the other side of the board. Now the screws that hold on the uh, heat sink are spring um, tensioned. They're spring screws. And they're also installed in a, a particular order to even out the pressure on the die. So these will always be marked. Uh, this one is B1, B4, or 4B, 1B, 4B, 2S, 3S, 3B, 4B, 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 Now, removing them, you can just remove them all the way. When we um, later put it back together, later when we put this back together, we will uh, start each of the screws and then we'll uh, torque them down in the order given. These screws are not captured. First, second, and then sometimes there's uh, additional screws that just hold the plates on. I can see at least one. So we're going to remove that screw after we get all these. Now, next thing is the thermal paste uh, has an adhesive quality to it. So you, uh, when you are ready to pull the heat sink off, what you want to do is just apply pressure and allow it to slowly peel off. No, no tool should be used to keep from uh, tearing up parts. There's quite a bit of pressure. Also, you don't want to flex the motherboard. And I need to make sure that all the screws are out. Does appear to all. Here's the processor. I'm just going to hold this pressure until it slowly releases. Go. Now that this is done, we're going to have to come back and um, repaste these. I'm trying to see if I can set this down without um, getting paste everywhere. All right. And then here is the board. Get a good look at him now. The board has um, uh, thermal gap pads uh, for the uh, FETs and for the inductors. And then these are the DRAM for the uh, GPU and then uh, FETs and then inductors. So it's important to cool these power supplies. So these areas, these are power supplies for the processor, and these are power supplies for the GPU, and then DRAM for the GPU. 
This one that's missing its thermal gap pad is most likely stuck to the bottom of the uh, heat sink. So now after we finish this, we're gonna have to come clean this paste up and review it. And then we're gonna have to make sure that all of the thermal gap pads are back in place and accounted for. Uh, and then once we repaste, we can reapply and tighten down the screws in the correct order. So this is the bottom of the motherboard. And you can see the Core i7 processor and the ARC A770M with 16 gig of VDDR6 memory. Head on over to simplynook.com at the links below. Configure your Serpent Canyon. We'll build it up custom for you. And you won't have to go through this because we'll have done it for you. Thank you for joining me.